as we then scroll back to the left and down, we're going to look at the thermometer panel. A lot of information actually on this panel. So as we zoom in, we're going to notice there's some numbers towards the top, and then there's some numbers that reside along the sides of the thermometers or the bulbs. Starting over at the left hand side, we notice theta. Theta is, the, is labeled and it's a darker blue bulb or thermometer. Starting from the top, we see the number 20. If you remember under auto thresholding, that was our percent time above threshold. That was our target. Currently, next to that is displayed where we are at this moment. So currently, with this simulation, we're fluctuating between 19 and 20 and 21. You'll notice that it fluctuates. Okay. And the reason it's fluctuating is because our thermometer, of course, is essentially going up and down. The fixed threshold at this moment is 6.7 microvolts. Next to that in red is telling you where the threshold would need to be at this moment to meet that target, that 20% target. See how that is fluctuating slightly? That continues to adjust under a dampened rule. And every second or two, you're going to notice that that number is more likely going to change because it's continually telling you where you would need to be to meet that target above, which is that 20%. As then we zoom out slightly, we're going to be able to see that number 20 again at the top. And if for some reason I wanted to make a change in the session and say that instead of 20% time over threshold, I, only, I want the client to be out of threshold 25% of the time, for instance. If I hit the T for theta key on the keyboard, you're going to notice I can change that number. I've just moved the target to 25%. Now the goal is that they'll be in criteria 75% of the time. Now at this point, no changes have taken effect. They won't take effect until I either hit the Y key or the run recycles. So if we're at a point where it's two minutes has crossed over, it will update. And that has just actually happened. Okay, see how it changed to 5.7? Now if I hit the Y key continually, you'll notice I can lock those numbers back together because at that moment in time it needed to be at 5.5 to meet the target percentage. If I did it again it would need to be at 5.8. Our fixed threshold continues to adjust to the target. Okay, You also see that on your other two components. Right now 60 percent time over thresholds our goal. If I said with the L key and I changed The target, oop, I'm sorry, it's the B key for beta instead of low beta. As I change the target to 70 and then hit the Y key, we're going to see this 5.7 change. And again, it updates to the new target. Our next display I'd like to discuss is our component trends. What we have here is we have an example of a trend view that will show theta, beta, and high beta. But starting back up at theta, we notice that, again, we're colored in the, the same dark blue. The 5.8 that you see here in this white line represents the threshold. So it's showing us how often is the client below threshold. Very useful graph for the clinician. And it actually is a good graph to train on, too. Okay, we see the same information for beta. Of course, it's a go. And the goal is for the client to be above that white line, or that 4.9. As we scroll down, the high beta is the same scenario. White line's the threshold. The goal to be below it as much of the time as possible. As we then scroll up to the top of the training screen, we can choose some different displays to look at. 
I'm up at the display button. As I click display, I get this menu again. I'm going to go ahead and turn off trends components. Okay. And then as I stay on display, I'm going to choose the mini brain mirror FFT. Okay. This is going to just add a different panel to our training screen. And now we see a different panel. As we're looking at the FFT spectral display, we notice it goes from delta all the way up to gamma. And we can also increase the amplitude of this particular display by simply hitting the plus sign. Okay, we notice that then we see the amplitude rise. As we fade back to the training screen, we can also look at a few of the other displays. So as I choose a different display, I'll turn off the FFT and we'll go ahead and simply hit the wide wide trends for events. Okay. And what we'll do is I'm just going to click through these quickly just so you can see how you can turn them on and off. And you can then realize that you have the complete control over the training screen and the layout. Okay.